Hey guys, I just wanted to come on here and do a bit of a makeup video for the uh, video that I uploaded last night on the whole, you know, giving my two cents on the whole Amazon uh, situation. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the channel update, I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, it's been happening a lot. I think it's mostly due to the fact that I've been doing 2.7K instead of like 1080p or regular 4K. Uh, so it's kind of slowed down a little bit. So it's kind of weird that it's been doing that. Again, I don't know if it's the computer, or you know, and it's do you know, and it's you know doing like little mini updates, or it's loading stuff, or you know, it's doing a virus scan. I don't know what it is. Again, I just wish that you know Microsoft or Linux or whoever you you utilize as your software for your computer would at least give us like a message saying, hey, we're doing this right now. Will you please would you know, we recommend you not do anything while we're doing this? So. Uh, but anyway, getting on to the topic, um, as I said in the video yesterday, uh, basically this uh, this lady wasn't um, too happy with Amazon. Um, long story short, a lady has filed a lawsuit, an injunction against Amazon Prime, mostly the Prime Video Division, uh, because of the fact that she apparently found out by reading the fine print and the user terms and agreements that even though you use your own, you know, hard-earned money, whether it's to, you know, um, uh, let's see, whether it's to, what, what can I give you as a good example, visually, let me see, um, oh, here we go, whether it's to your cards or, you know, whatever, you know, even though you use your own hard-earned money to um, buy the movie, purchase the movie in digital form, uh, according to Amazon, in the title of the video, and I'll put this title back in in the title, <laughs> you know, area here of this video, Amazon basically believes that you don't technically own it. Basically, what it sounds like when Amazon tells uh, people, "Hey, you don't technically own your uh, video." As a matter of fact, I think the title was what was it? Uh, it says Amazon argues users don't really own the movies that they purchase, the digital movies. So basically what it sounds like Amazon is saying is that when you purchase your digital movie, it's actually on loan to you for an unlimited, un-pacific, uh, un-pacificized, un un-pacificized, easy for me to say, if that's a word, <laughs> in an unlimited amount of time, or at least, you know, an indefinite limited amount of time. You know, basically that's what it is. You're you know, you're purchasing a movie or that, well, basically when you purchase the movie, you're basically getting it on loan for an indefinite amount of time because at any time, the agreement between Amazon and the studio that allows them to distribute the film uh, digitally could end. And it's not just for Amazon either. You got, you know, Vudu, you got Apple, you got, you know, Google, you got Fandango, the own, you know, streaming service besides Vudu that they now own. Movies anywhere, you know, you have all these places that are digital distributors of these digital versions of movies and shows, and here you have Amazon, basically, I guess, on behalf of all of them, saying, "Hey, look, technically, when you purchase the digital movie, you're actually getting it loaned to you. It's actually you're loan being loaned this movie for an indefinite amount of time until um, something happens. Uh, it's kind of like when you go on Spotify or Amazon Music." You know, when you go on one of them, you think you have all these songs in your list, in your playlist that you can watch or listen to at any time, and there won't be no problems. But unfortunately, what happens is there are times that when you go back to said playlist to listen to that, you know, to listen to those songs, you'll notice that certain songs are no longer there. And it's all due to exactly what Amazon is trying to point out. It's a licensing agreement. I mean, there are, you know, songs that I have purchased and I do have access to and I can download uh, still to this very day. But from a, like listening to them on my phone to the Amazon Music app, I can't do that anymore unless I download them. And the reason being is because the licensing agreement, you know, uh, basically, uh, sorry about that. Uh, basically to um, Amazon, what I'm trying to say is, you know, the partnership uh, between them, you know, between, you know, the studio, between the record label and Amazon, 
you know, uh, comes to an end. And, um, you know, I had come to an end, so that's why even if I purchased it, unless I downloaded it, and again, like I said, I still could do that. Um, basically, uh, basically the, uh, the, the song's no longer there, like I said, unless I download it. Um, so I guess that's basically what Amazon's trying to tell, you know, the course. They're saying, look, you know, the lady should have read the terms in agreement, which she did, obviously, that, hey, it's out of our hands. It's out of the hands of Voodoo. It's out of the hands of Apple. It's out of the hands of Google, Movies Anywhere. That, you know, if a studio, a major studio like WB, Disney, Universal, MGM, or an ind a little independent or minor independent, uh, semi-major independent studio, you know, unless they decide to, you know, if they decide to pull the plug, basically, what I'm trying to say, you know, you know, is there's, there's nothing they can do about it. There's nothing they can, um, you know, say or do, you know, and that's, that's what they're trying to get across, like, Hey, even though you, you know, bought the movie, you purchased a digital version of the movie, you technically don't really own it because it's on loan to you unless, you know, you use the option that a lot of them have been giving, and that's the download option. And the reason they give that download option is because they know, obviously, there's a chance, a slim chance, but a chance, you know, the agreement between them and said studios uh, could be broken or could be ended, you know, just like that. And they're trying to point this out to the Supreme Supreme Courts. And as I said in the video yesterday, everybody from Clownfish TV to John Campa to a lot of people were talking about this. You know, Hollywood Reporter, I linked it, I'll link it again here in this video, have even said the same thing. You know, you know, that basically um, you know, they've all you know, they've all said the same thing. That basically you know, there's nothing really that, you know, any of these streaming services can do if the studio decides to break the, the agreement or end the agreement. And like I said, a good example from my personal experience is songs that I purchased uh, through Amazon Music that I could still download, but are no longer available for me to digitally, you know, undownload it, if you will, um, be able to listen to through my Amazon Music app because the licensing between uh, said studio or said record label and Amazon Music ended. So, uh, so basically, it's you know this one of those kind. Of, it's basically that kind of a situation that you know they're trying to tell this lady, eighty, as well as tell the courts. And basically, they're telling they also tell the courts that this lady continuously purchased more digital content, movies and shows, thirteen of them at least in total, even after filing this injunction and lawsuit. And, um, again, the, you know, they're trying to say, look, you know, they're trying to tell the courts, look, you know, it's, out, you know, whatever happens, you know, it's out of our hands. And they're also explaining that not only did this lady, like I say, purchase additional content, but she's basically filing an injunction in a lawsuit against Amazon from a theological or theological or possible perspective. In other words, she's basically... Uh, filing a lawsuit on an assumption that this is going to happen and she doesn't like it. Now, John Campa and Clownfish TV and others did argue that, yeah, they kind of see where she's coming from, but they also understand where Amazon and Voodoo and other sites like them are coming from as well. Like, they understand that, you know, from a consumer perspective, if you're going to put that, you're going to put that purchase item, uh, you know, next to the rental option, or purchase option next to the rental option, it's going to basically make people think, oh, if I purchase this, then I own it. It's all mine. But in reality, that's not the case. A digital purchase is more of a loan. And that's it. There's not really much they can do about that. You know, and, you know, John and, and Clownfish TV and others have said that they need to make that more clearer to the consumer, that when you purchase you're actually just purchasing it for an indefinite amount of time, an indefinite amount of time, uh, until maybe the agreement is ended between the studio and the digital distributor slash streaming service. Another example that John brought up was, you know, believe it or not, movies. Like here, I own this physical copy of Annihilation, and it does come with the digital code that gives you a digital copy of the movie as well to watch anywhere you want. But 
John basically brought, uh, pointed out that even though I physically own it, there's a percentage of it, like 10% of it that I don't own. And that 10% is the ability to maybe make a copy of it. So if I was to take Annihilation and say, hey, I want to burn a copy of this and make, you know, give one, give a copy to my sisters or my cousins. You know, I can't do that. I can't technically do that because that 10% that they own of my physical copy of the movie, you know, is that protection that they put on the movie, you know, that makes it uncopyable. I mean, back in the day when DVDs first started to come around, yeah, there were studios like Warner Brothers and MGM and Universal and at times Disney, you know, that, you know, had movies and stuff that you could copy from DVD to DVD. Like if you had a DVD recorder, which I did, you could do that. And same with Blu-ray. But lately, a lot of studios have, in recent years, if not the past decade, have come to realize, hey, the only way we're going to... Um, can you know not lose money is to put a is to kind of put some kind of claim even if it's a tiny 10 percent claim of ownership on these physical medias that people buy and that like i say that 10 percent is basically making sure you can't copy that movie um so basically that's an example he used like technically you may own 90 percent of the physical media like annihilation you know but you but there's that 10 percent that you don't own and that 10 percent is basically be, due to the fact that you can't copy it. Other examples he used is, you know, buying mugs like this, or, you know, figures, you know, like this. You know, that when you earn your own, when you basically earn and purchase, you know, uh, basically when you earn and utilize your own money to do so, these are technically, those are technically your items. You can do whatever you want with them. You know, when, I mean, for example, I used to have my Celestia, you know, along with my Nightmare Moon slash Luna, and I got to by the wing right there. I shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. Uh, but basically, I used to have them displayed over here. Now I have them displayed right next to my, on top of my record player. And I can move them anytime I want so I can play my records. Or my vinyl player, whatever they want to call them now. And I can move them at any time, you know, to play my vinyls. Um, and, I, you know, I, that's my choice. That's my option. I can do whatever I want with them. You know, same with my mug here. My Snoopy chilling mug. You know, basically, I could do whatever I want. Like, I got coffee in here right now. I could put orange juice later on. I could put milk, eggnog. I could do whatever I want with it. I could throw it against the wall if I want to. I mean, that's one example John Campa used about his Batman mug. He could throw it against the wall, and that's his choice. He could do anything he wants with it because he owns it. And that's kind of the, you know, thing he was pointing out. That, hey, we tend... That, when you purchase stuff like this, you own it. That's yours now. Nobody can tell you what to do with it. But when it comes to movies and, you know, music and even games, you know, there's a part of it that you don't own. There's a part of it you do not own. And that part is 10%. And that 10% is being, is the enable, is the unfortunate, unail, is the unfortunate, well, I guess fortunate, but unfortunate in some people's cases, ability to copy it because there's that protection so you know those are good uh, so basically john gave a good example there um you know the technicality or technicality or technicality whatever i can't pronounce i can't say say the word right now the uh, technicality that's the word technicality uh, perspective of digitalness and even physicalness you know, when it comes to media, because, you know, physical, you majority, you own all of it, or well, not all of it, you majority own 90% of it, but there's that 10% that you don't, because that's, per that's owned by the studio, because it's due to a protection lockout that they have on the disc, or the physical part of the media, you know, um, same things with games, and somewhat music, you know, some, you know, gaming publishers, and music labels, um, they have a protection on the disc that in, that, in a, that that basically disables any chance you have of trying to copy it, you know, onto another disc or cop, you know, copy it onto another disc to allow someone else to have, you know, like the the CD, the music CD, or or copy it onto another Blu-ray or whatever for someone to have the game. So uh, basically, that's. You know, that's kind of a good example that he's giving.
And when it comes to digital media, you know, he, again, like a lot of us, he understands where the lady's coming from, but he also understands where a lot of these services like Amazon, who she's suing, are coming from too. They're basically saying, look, there's nothing we could really do about whatever happens in the future with our with your digital purchase because unless like i said you use and i this is one thing they didn't point out you know unless you utilize that download option that they give you you can't you know that if anything does happen you won't have access to your movie anymore and there's nothing they can really do now again like i said john campa and clownfish tv and others did say and i agree with them that there needs to be more clarification by streaming services digital distributors like amazon prime and Vudu and Movies Anywhere and Apple and Google and, you know, Fandango and all of them. And I'm pretty sure after this whole lawsuit thing clears up, there will be, that when you purchase a digital movie, you're basically purchasing it for an indefinite amount of time. Mostly you're getting it loaned to you for an indefinite amount of time. And, you know, unless, you know, something comes up, like, you know, the agreement being broken. But they should also, when they do that, they should also clarify, oh no, by the way, to ensure you do have the movie for when it, for more than an indefinite amount of time. In other words, make sure you kind of, you know, safely secure the fact that you own it. Utilize, they, should promote to, they should promote utilizing the download option to do so. But, um, yeah, this lady, like I said, apparently is not happy, but... You know, again, a lot of us can understand both sides of the spectrum. And we do kind of agree that these streaming services need to make things a lot clearer when it comes to purchasing or rent, you know, purchasing uh, movies. That basically when you're purchasing it, you're actually just being, having it loaned to you. So, yeah, that's what's going on there. And uh, again, just wanted to come on here, do more of a updated version of the story. I'm still going to keep the original video on there because that way you can kind of get both versions if you want to. Uh, but I just wanted to come on here give you again an updated version of the story going around about this whole Amazon deal. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below about it. What are your thoughts on this whole situation? Do you think streaming services like Amazon need to be more clearer about the purchasing option? And do you think they should promote the download option so that way people have the have the digital copy in some form in case something does happen down the line? And do you think this lady is in the wrong for not understanding? Or do you... Oh, but yeah, basically, do you think this lady's in the wrong or do you think she's in the right? You know, for not understanding, you know, the terms and agreement, even about what's... about the purchase. Do you think she's in the wrong or the right? Let me know down below. Comment if you like, guys. I want to hear your thoughts on this, and I will talk to you later. Have a good day.